Hello everybody, hope you're having a great day. Here is the tutorial that I told you that I would do. I just showed you this book recently. It's a wonderful little book, perfect size to fit in the purse. It's about three and a half by six inches and it's got all the pages for writing and it's made with this awesome piece of cardboard from a delicious chocolate bar. You can get the chocolate bar at a dollar store, readily available. So what I do here first, I just cut it down so that those little ledges are off and so it just makes a nice rectangle see right there I'm gonna cut that down right to the little spot gonna flatten it out and this is just a regular eight and a half by eleven piece of paper so it just fits perfectly on that I just kind of line it up figure it out and then I pull out my glue so my glue what I want to do I'm gonna just kind of get it all over I want to make sure that the edges are nice to glued the edges are always kind of an issue aren't they you want to make sure your glue gets there and the glue can kind of dry out a little bit. So I'm just squirting it all over the place, getting it nice and covered. And then what I do, I take this. This is this is a little tool that was my son-in-law's actually. It was to help put on the, I don't know, those things on his phone, the, the little, whatever it is. I got it from him. It's just kind of, reminds me of a spatula. It works out perfectly for something like that. So putting on my paper, smooshing it down nicely to just get that glue to hold on to all of it. And then what I'm doing here, I'm just taking a, a, a napkin, a dry napkin, and then just going down over it. There's a little ledge showing, so I'm cutting that off to make sure it's nice and straight. I examine it and just trim it down. This, it was just ever so slightly, a little piece sticking off, but I wanted it, I wanted it coming just nicely to the edge. So there we go. It has a nice, has nice clean lines with it. So now for the next part, I pick a piece that I think matches nicely with the front. All I'm doing here is tracing it and then I'm gonna cut it out. Easy peasy, right? We don't want anything too complicated. You wanna just like be able to do it and have fun with it. So cutting that, moving it out of the way, and I'm gonna do the same thing what I did with the other one. Make sure it matches up, getting the glue and getting all those edges. So once I know I have everything all ready to go, doing the same thing, putting the paper back on, and it is sticky, so you wanna just kinda make sure you get it on there, squirm it around a little bit if you need to, and just get it so that it's a nice fit. So I put water, you know, my, my little surface there was a little bit sticky. Wanted to clean it up, probably not the best idea, cause it didn't dry as fast as I would've liked it, but you just make do, don't you? So once again, I'm taking that that napkin and just kind of pushing it down that paper towel just getting it a little service now if you have like a brayer that works great too something you know just something that has a little bit of a body to it trim it nicely and i see that my edges aren't as perfect as i'd like them to be so that this glue works just splendidly with the little nozzle just sticking it in and it just it sticks great this is the glitter glue the art glitter so I had my eye on this gal and I wanted to use her. This was from a pad of paper I got a long time ago. I think it was just at Hobby Lobby. And she just fits perfectly right there. So I go ahead and fussy cut her out, get her nice and, nice and pretty. There we go. making sure those creases are nice for the edges. That's where my signature is gonna be going in. So I match her up and I'm gonna do some dyeing. So now, dyeing with paper like this, it's not the easiest thing, you know, the paper's kind of flimsy. I do want my edges dyed a little bit, but then also I just take it down on the surface and go over, because I wanted a little bit of the coloring to be coming in onto the surface of the girl. And while I'm at it, just inking up all the edges of my cover here, giving it a nice distressed look, both on the outside and on the inside. 
And then going over those creases like this, just easy, just do it all at once and done. So here's my little girl again, little girl, my lady, my beautiful lady. So what I'm doing here, I want there to be some highlighting or some distressing, some shadowing from where she's going to be. So I go ahead and put distress, just kind of the area where she's going to be laying. So there's kind of a shadowed effect, it just creates a little bit more dimension. But I wanted to add more to it. And so I put this doily there and I really liked what that did. So rather than using um, my Mod Podge, I just used the glue. And it, you can see what I do here. I put it along the edge so I know where I need to place it. And then I just smush it around with my finger. And I do that on the other side too. See how I'm going around the edge of the doily? Now I know where my glue needs to go. So I can just place glue around that area, smudge it around with my finger and there just worked out nicely drying that get it nice and dry and then taking a look again so I like the way it looks but I think I really want something else there and so I have a scrap piece of lace and I like that there so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on too it's nice just layering different things it just adds a little bit more depth a little bit more texture a little bit more personality and it add a little brightness here too which I liked it, how I did it made her pop out a little bit more and here's just a little smidgen of fabric it has a soft pink color in it so it goes with the cover but yet it's not going to take away from all of the cover it's just going to add a little a little bit more personality there but not trying to steal the show okay so now, 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 so I choose to use the art glitter glue on this one just so I could have a little bit more control. I wanted to make sure I did get along the edges of, of my gal here. So the thing about this tip though, I mean the glue comes out slowly in the little nozzle. You have to be patient, but what an awesome glue it is. I just love it. So she fits perfectly. Okay, now that she's there, I can work on some other little areas. Do a little clipping, check it out, and punch. So this is my long-armed punch, the, I think it's called a big bite. Uh, I could be wrong in it, but I think that's what we call it. And it's just long enough so that I can go punch in the middle. I just You can use your, just like an awl there or something, and that works just fine. I just decided to use the punch. And so now I'm auditioning different things. How, what do I want to use there? I was thinking of an elastic band, you know, something that I could pull and flip around it. I didn't like this. And I then I started thinking, well, maybe I just want something that I can wrap around it. Something that has a little bit more elegance than a standard elastic type thing so what I do with this I take a look and I really liked how it went around the waistline so I knot it up make a decision and I do it I'm just gonna keep that there and then dismiss the idea about using an elastic I like the elastic if you use elastic it's awesome possum but I really liked how it lo this looked for this particular one so I'm gonna put that aside for a minute I'm gonna cut some papers for the signatures so like I said the signatures in the inside are three and a half three and a half and so I, I I cut it let's see it was three I must have cut it seven inches total and then by I don't remember what I cut it but I cut it so that it was smaller in the inside right so that you have like a quarter inch edge or an eighth of an inch it's whatever you really prefer I usually like about a quarter an inch that way if I have some extra lace or things sticking out then it allows me that kind of room so there's my first piece that I cut and then what I do I take another piece and I just use the first piece to measure it. And then rather than cutting that end part off, I just fold it and I decide I'm gonna make a pocket out of that part. And then I use everything, that little little um, scrap part I had, I just put it right in there. I made a little, little uh, tiny tag flip flap that's gonna go through. So I put another pocket in 
just I'm going to use every bit of my paper that I cut, cut up here. So on one page I'll make a regular page like this and the other page I'll make a pocket page. So the thing with this one, you don't want to put too many pages in, especially as you start embellishing it because it starts getting thick. So you just have to be aware of that as you make yours. You, you don't want to put too much, otherwise it's going to just overflow and it's going to be difficult to close. So I also want to add some frilliness with the doilies. I think the doilies, especially with a vintage look like this, they just add such a, just such an elegant feel to it, doesn't it? Just makes it feel a little bit more special. So I want that right in the front. So as soon as you open book the book, that's what you're going to see. So this particular doily is a little bit too long, so I'm snipping off some of the ends of it, but it's, it's not a problem. The doily still holds together fine. And these are guest checks. They work great in here. They have that nice vintage feel also. So I'm just flipping through and seeing, okay, well, where do I want to put things? Because I want to have another doily. I want to put more guest checks in there. So I just flip through and see what is it looking like. Do a little more trimming. Take another look. Doily. Now guest check should go in somewhere. Right there. So I put it in here and you can see and I decide to switch it around. And the reason is that little flat piece of um, coffee dyed paper, it covered up the red letters and I didn't want it to do that when I flipped through. I wanted to be able to see it. So by turning it over, I could see it on the other side. So that seemed good to me. So I kind of check out how everything is, see if it feels good. And it does feel good. It closes fine. Earlier, I had to pull it out and I just made a little tighter fold on one of the pieces because it stuck out a little bit too far and it inhibited the closing of the book a little bit. So I've got my clips going. And then my holes. So I put a hole here and then I realize, wait, 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 what am I doing? I need to do it with my paper. So I grab my paper, get the same hole going. And then I have to figure out because it is, there is that quarter inch. It's not like it's, um, I need to try to get in the middle of that little quarter inch part in my spine. And so I fiddle with it a little bit folding it moving it around until I feel I have a good spot and then I go ahead and pierce it I'm piercing it about an inch down on both sides and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew it if you've never sewn a pamphlet stitch before I'll put a link to that so that you can see and know how to do it it's not difficult but for the first time it's you know it feels kind of funny but once you do it it's like no problem at all so tying it up here, making it nice and tight. This is a little bit thinner uh, thread than I'd like, or not thread, but you know what I'm talking about. Well, just thread, crochet thread. And so I double it up and I put a dot of glue. So I try this out again and I figure out, okay, so what do I want to do with my clo closer? closure? And I was thinking a button so this particular stuff here, it's got gold and, and white. It's all bound together. And so it, it gets uh, unraveled. So I had to put a little glue on it. So I thought, you know, maybe a button on the end, since the clothing is kind of central here with this darling gal. So I fuss with a little bit. I finally get it on. I get a look at it kind of auditioning it seeing you know what do I what do I think and I'm not I'm not really all that impressed I'm just trying to figure it out so I try another button I think well I'll put a button closure so what I do it does have the cardboard to give it a little bit of body something for the button to hold on to but I know it won't be strong enough and it might tear over time so what I do I put a piece of fabric this little piece, add some glue, and I glue it to the back of it. That way, when I sew my button, my button has something to hold on to other than just the cardboard. It gives it a little bit more durability, and that was really important to me. So I put lace behind it as well, and then I take my awl and I do some poking just to prepare those holes for me. So it's still gonna be a little uncomfortable because it's hard to see with the lace and all. 
So I'm going to have to do a little filling around for it, but that's okay. I'll figure it out. So just be aware if you do something like this that you're going to encounter that as well. So I make my knot first and I have my knot right on the outside there and then I'm covering it up with that lace right there. When the lace goes on, my first knot is covered and then going back through. So I'm just sewing it on just like any other button sewing you do. Make sure your button is a little bit loose so that you have space to, to wrap around your... Um, your thread stuff there that you're binding around it so this is a jewel that I got on sale probably last year I think and so I'm just now gonna use it that's the thing with when you get something on sale and you don't really have a purpose for it then it suddenly it's just the perfect thing so I put that on and with this extra stuff you can make a nice little strand it's um it's really sweet sweet and simple that's my favorite so all I'm doing is tying it on making the knots really making sure the knots really tight but I also put just a touch of glue because so many times I've had something and those knots do come, come undone so a little precautionary touch of glue yeah works great so I'm trying this I thought oh a bead would be nice on this right yeah no my bead would not fit in through or my my thread would not fit on through the bead so i have to abandon that idea so i did find more little charm things i stole this one from a paper clip that i had but it looked adorable there so i took it the paper clip will be fine without it and here's another thing that i got on clearance and it has just the perfect little dangly thing so i have three dangly things there putting them on and I think it's just perfect. It makes a nice little look. Dangling down. Almost as if it's dangling from like a belt around her waist or something. So it makes just a nice little visual effect. Tighten it up. Clip it off. And there we go. Isn't that sweet? I like it. Okay. Time to regroup. Let's open it up and see. So now for the inside. I decide to take this and just make a little pocket. Boom, I'm going to cut it off, fold it, and cut it. My favorite, easy peasy junk journaling. So what I do here, though, I add on my hinge pieces to make it so that I have a little bit more space. Like, like if I'm to add glue all the way around the outside, that really starts limiting the space and determining the size of a tag that can go inside. And I want to be able to have more options. And so I put like that, these little one inch folded in half hinge tags. And so that fits out nice, fits nicely. And now I have more room. I can tuck something in. I try that out. I'm going to go back and remove it, but for now it's there. So what I decide is that I want to put some stamping. I actually go through the entire book and do a little stamp on stamping on every single page. I cut that out because you kind of get the idea, right? Stamp, stamp, stamp. Here's a little teeny tiny piece that was left from that front gal. Works perfect here. So just go ahead and grab your stamps not your stamps, well yeah, your stamps, your stamps and your scraps and just start filling in your pages. Here's my little box of scraps and I'm just going to pull out stuff and I'm going to try it out. And so what I initially do here is do some tabs. I wanted to have the look on the outside of my book to be something that that was dominant right because I'm not going to do a lot of things on the inside of my book when I open this up I want to see a bunch of fun frilly things along the edges of my book and so I grab that add a little bit more decoration here now this lace it soaks in or something the glue so you'll see me here I have to do it several times before it actually sticks there we go so now another lace. I'm going to do this three times. Find three different places. One on the far upper, one in the middle, and then one on the lower. So just kind of creating a pattern, picking a page, and just stapling it on. I love that little stapler. Now what I'm doing, I'm grabbing something different. I'm grabbing the pinks, and I'm finding just kind of a different location. 
kind of right in between the two that I just did grabbing another one finding another location punching it don't you love how fast it is and then a third one and then finding a location for that that seems balanced with the pink as well as balance with the previous lace that I just did. Okay, so now I've got something going there and I like that, but I want one more texture involved in it. And so what I do, I find this, this has more, um, it's kind of, oh, kind of, it's not really canvas, but it's kind of canvasy and it has a beautiful fringy distress from ripping it. And so I, I um, put these on and I also put them on not perfectly square. You can see that in that one a little bit more. I want it to look a little bit more distressed and a little bit more haphazard. Keep on going. Looking for another spot. Trying to find it. And I found a spot I like. And that's what you gotta do. You just gotta flip through, take a look, till you find what you like. All right, so I decide on this tag and I'm gonna doll it up. So I wanted a piece of this material there and I pick out one that has more of the pink flower on it. Get that there. And then I decide some lace would look nice by it. So add some lace and then I also add some cheesecloth. So I have a, a triple layer there, just three different types of textures and looks and it makes for a nice tag. So I flip the page and just start dreaming and thinking. I brought a, um, a stack of stamps over and so this particular stamp I thought would look nice along this edge. So this is the first pocket. I'm just quickly gluing down the sides and then I decide on this. Just gonna glue that down real quick. Nice little element. I opt to go for my glue gun just because I knew it would secure it. It would hold it down a little bit better. A little bit faster too. Let's be honest. Glue gun is just so nice and so quick. There I go again with that same little tuck. But I know it's not quite right. I add this and I decide no, no, the, just the rip look it doesn't go with this book. It's not what I want. So I go back to it. I pull it out. I try this out. So you gotta try things. So realize that when you try things, it's okay. It's good because you're gonna try things and you're gonna realize, yeah, it's not really what you want. But you know what? You can save it for something else. So as you can see, I pulled that out. So I had this one left over from my um, scalloped edge project. And so I thought, well, she would look really cute. So here's this pocket. I wanted her sticking out. If I put her on the other pocket, you wouldn't see her face, so I put her here. So I'm not done with the other one, but since I had that piece and was inspired, I just moved on and did that. Put that together. I liked it. Moving on to another page. Kind of seeing what I have and what inspires me. Flipping through, flipping through, back at this page. So I have these awesome pink um, tickets. If you need some tickets, I have these ones in my Etsy shop. I love pink. I love working with pink. So I bought a big fat roll of these pink ones. So I try that out. <laughs> I keep on going back to that one. That one is actually like uh, you would use it as a spool. You can wrap things around it. That little white thing that I keep on trying to tuck in places. I decide that square right one, white one's the best. So I pull out this little edge trim stamp in this, my pink, and I start stamping it on the edges there. And I realize I really like the addition of the pink. So you're gonna see me find different places that I can stamp around. Okay, just adding a little bit more color to my pages. I really like that. And so then you can see here, I just started kind of randomly stamping so that I could get that effect. 
So I didn't want my white paper white. And this is just standard copy paper, I must say. So I put that stamp on it and it worked perfectly. I like that. So here I go again, I'm just kind of randomly, lightly adding these stamped marks. They just kind of have a distressed feel to it. Right there though, I put a, a full complete stamped image. And this word I liked, I thought it would fit perfectly on one of these little, I guess it's about a third of a page size that, I, I don't know. So I decided the pink needed the addition of some of the distressed ink. So you see me going here and just adding some of the vintage photo distress ink on the pages as well. Let's see, flipping, flipping. What inspires me? I think, okay, this needs something there. And I had this leftover piece of napkin. And I just slap it on there. And it looks great. It adds that little personality. It's kind of a cool little zipper piece and stuff. And, you know, I'm trying these things out. Just trying to see what might work. A lot of things you just kind of reject. But you don't know unless you try it. I decided on this. This is just a little scrap and it just worked perfectly there. And I had this piece and another pocket. And that's gonna go nicely there. So this is an awesome stamp that I got. It's actually the first time that I use it. It's got all these this photo stuff on it. It's just the rubber ink part. And I used two colors on, in it. I used the pink and the vintage photo to stamp it so it's just a nice muted stamp and I decided this fabric worked nicely over it it just created an airy type feel so I secure it down with two staples and look at other places that I can embellish and create balance so I just Rip that off the other page and I put it right there, that other little part. So let's see. I decide on this gal. I think this is a graphic 45 stamp set, by the way. Maybe it's called Off to the Races. I'm, I'm not positive. It's a wonderful set though. I do do love their stamp sets. Creating more texture and movement with that pink. Just bringing the pink in and trying different things. And this is where I cut up that vintage um, doily, lace edge of the doily and decided it works splendidly there. I, I really, I really like it there. So now that that's secure, I still want a little lace on this other side. It just brings that elegance over to the other part of the page, but then it starts hiding the thing that's right behind it. So I'm looking at my options. Yeah, no, 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 no. And then this works. It's soft, it's subtle sticks out there enough to just kind of complete the look of the page so I have these other stamps I thought well they would be nice just getting a little word in there I love word stamps I love I love words within within pages so this one says life is beautiful and then I add a little bit more color using this striped fabric which is perfect and do a little more flipping So trying out, trying to decide. So this was the part that I cut out from the front pocket and it works perfectly here. It was the leftover part and it couldn't, couldn't have been better. And these are the legs from the gal in the front that were left over and they work out perfectly on the back of this uh, guest check. How great is that, huh? So then I take another look, 
do a little stamping there. I wanted to add something. That's kind of a 1920s feel to it or something. But I like it. So what am I going to do here? I'm not quite sure yet. So I start from the beginning. So I do this a lot. I'll start from the beginning and I start flipping through and just get a fill and then I'll start picking something up and adding it. So if I get to a point where I'm not sure what I'm doing or what I want to do, I go to the beginning and I start flipping. So as I was flipping here, I decided, no, I wanted to cut that piece off. It didn't look good long. Add a little ink. And then I decided it needed something there. That little fabric came in handy. There we go. Add a little more. And flip again. Okay, this page just felt a little bit too bare. I wanted to do something else. And this darling gal worked out perfectly. So I put her there. Once again, just bringing in a little bit of color to the page. And also just a repeat pattern. This is where I put the cheesecloth down. Just adds nice, airy texture. And something different than you see in the rest of the book. So I was thinking about putting this little snippet in there. But I decided it just, it just was too thick. It added too much thickness with those little... Um, pom-pom balls on it so I rejected it but this lace I thought just added nice check texture and interest on top of the material so I lay that down and I like it while I'm doing it I see a button catch my eye and I'm like why not looks great and it does look great I love buttons so taking another peek here and this is baby powder. I take the baby powder because I want to cover up. So I used hot glue to glue on that, um, the lace piece right there. And it has a shiny look to it. And so what I do, I take my paintbrush with the baby powder and I just paint baby powder over it and it, it dulls it so you don't have this shininess sticking out through the lace. Once again, picking up scraps, picking up pieces, bringing in color bringing a little bit movement, bringing in just just a little bit more interest on pages by, but also not taking it too much room on the pages because I really do want them to be used. I have this little snippet in my container and these and these just wondering, you know, what else do I have that I could maybe use and this don't want all the purple around it though I don't like that but I cut this up and give it a try and decide on ripping it because the full square was just too much but this little clipped off ripped up portion worked well for me so this I cut off earlier from that the the piece right above it and it worked nicely down below there. I tried this there, but after a moment I decide, yeah, no, I don't really like it. So I take it off and I put something else. And so just know that's okay to do. If you put something there and you decide against it, just pull it up and try something else. So taking a little more look. I think that's an option, but I'm not I'm not ready to commit to it. So I thumb through my book a little bit more. I think, hey, that might look nice there. It's an option. But then I decide right here, I have nothing on that back page and it just adds a nice a nice little feel to it. A little bit frilly by the the doily there. So now that I'm at this point, I wanted to kind of just refresh in and start again. So see, there I go again, flipping through, just kind of looking, seeing what I feel, what hits me. And that number, I think, oh, I could use just something else. 
Corners are great little places to put stuff. I really was thinking it would be nice to use a safety pin, but decided against it. So I put this little color down, this little one, but as I look at it, it's so much brighter than the rest of the book. It's a great piece. What I do, I pull out some white paint and I put white paint on it and it just kind of dulls it down and mutes it a little bit so it matches the feel of the rest of the book. And actually right there, that little tag that I just put in, that little, it's a painting, it's a painting that I cut out from a book I, sh I should have actually gone over with, with that because it's a little it's a little too intense of a color for the rest of the book so this is a, some stamps that I got they're kind of um, grungy lace and so I just placed it along the edge there and I cut this out from something else and I decide it looks perfect by my grungy lace. So I grab my glue and I slap it down there. I love it when that happens. I really like it there. Look a little more. What else do I see? And I try that. That's just a little ripped up scrap. Yeah, did nothing for me. Move on. But that space, I still feel like that space should have something. So I try this out. Nah out some lace yeah I like that lace at the top add a little there another one of my little flowers and I thought it just looks so sweet right there so it cuts over the line of that birch tree and right before the lady's face so this kind of simple little thing was cut out from that thing earlier so, yeah, I'm just looking at that page again. I started using my stamp almost like a paintbrush where I would grab a little paint and then I would just rub it across my page instead of just stamp it. And it, it worked out really well that way. So I went through my whole book and just so if there was any place that I wanted to add just a little pink, just a little blush. So I added it on just wherever I thought it needed it. Okay, another look. Back in the beginning. Back in the beginning and flip through. So I'm going to kind of show us so we can see it. Clear the way. So it unwraps. You open it. I'm gonna take a look at the pages, see if there's anything up. Oh, see, I see this again, it's like, okay. And this is how I work. I just pull out and go back and then flip through again. Decide a little there, a little there. Just doing a last peek through, seeing with what's on my pages and if there's anything else it needs and it looked pretty good oh my stamp got in the way over there so I'm I'm feeling my book and feeling that it, it really is full and I felt like my closure there was a little bit too tight so I work it a little bit creating a little bit more of a crease see me bending it right there so that side is creased a little bit more than the quarter inch that it is on the other side it's able to handle the added bulk that's often at the ends of junk journals. Okay, clearing it off here. So now let's take a look. I feel like, okay, this is, this is it. Actually, I do a little bit more after this video, I must confess. Unwraps nicely. We can flip through. There's the tag. And then we're done. We're at the end of our book here with these last parts. I hope you liked it. I hope you try to make one. 
They're easy to do, they're fun and enjoyable. Bye.